All right. Yes, so this Hangout is now live. I'm just going to do a little bit of an introduction. I've met you both, had you both in a class, but I'm just going to say hello to any future YouTube viewers that we might have listening. My name is Narelle. I am a teacher here on Verbling.com, and we are having an English class in reading comprehension for advanced students. A little bit about myself. I've been on Verbling for um, a few weeks now. I am a native English speaker residing just outside of New York City in the United States. I spent my uh, I've spent the past 13 years though living in Boulder, Colorado in the United States, a smaller city out west known for its beautiful mountains, its arid climate, its skiing, its snowboarding, and the great outdoors. So today we are going to, let's see, let me pull it up. We are going to have a reading comprehension and discussion about the state of mental health across the world and some of the unique alternatives that are coming up for treating and managing mental health. So hold on one second. Okay. Okay, I'm almost there. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Share. Okay, so I don't know why that's green. Let me zoom in a little bit though. So we'll begin by taking a look at our class goals and then having a little bit of a discussion before we dive into the article. And I would agree, Edson, that we've all got a little bit of crazy in us, so let's stop. I don't even know if uh, crazy is a good thing or a bad thing anymore. <laughs> it's hard to differentiate. Um, Edson, could you read the class goals for us, please? Yeah, class goals, improve reading comprehension skills, discuss, discuss growing global awareness uh, around alternative forms of healthcare, um, discuss global cultural taboos around mental health and the difficulties many war veterans must endure upon return home. Great, great, thank you. Okay, so uh, let's start by uh, discussing. Hi, what what is uh, what is mental health like in Japan, where you are from? Oh, Hyde, can you unmute so we can? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> there are many hard workers. Almost all cases over middle-aged people, men. Then uh -huh. uh, they had some mental illness, the kind of depression, and uh, it's getting heavier. Then it caused uh, their um, committing suicide. Oh, it's a very big problem. So mental health is a big problem in Japan. Yeah. yeah. Are there? Um, do you think that the treatment available for mental health in Japan is sufficient? Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, going to the psychiatric is um, uh, quite shameful for the people. Oh, repeat one more time. Say that again. The going to the psychiatric hospital is kind of shameful for Japanese people. Oh, oh, so it's a shameful thing. Yeah, they don't want to be said, uh, "Are you crazy or something?" Oh, so it sounds like um, it sounds like being labeled as mentally ill can have great repercussions mm -hmm. on uh, people's futures. Yeah, that's right. So oh, they are waiting for uh, in the, their house until the, their symptom is getting heavier. Oh, so so do people 
like do anything they can to hide their mental health issues? Yes, yes. At the faster they hide their mental issues, still working. Oh, so okay. That case is much different from American situation. Yes. I heard Americans uh, they uh, go to the hospital mm -hmm. uh, to uh, ask some advice very easily. Yes, yes, it's pretty easy in the United mm -hmm. States, and there, I think that there are some repercussions. Um, I think that some of uh, the older generation in the United States definitely still feels afraid of being labeled, but I come from a very progressive city. Boulder, everyone is all about talking about mental health and going to therapy, and everybody, everyone is all about kind of talking about their problems, and so it was a really great place to live. <laughs> yeah. And do, what do you think uh, might be helpful? What do you think would be helpful for your country. Do you agree with the current system, or would you like to see change, and what kinds yes, of change? Maybe they need to open mind. Open more, be more open-minded. <laughs> yes. Are there any things that you think might help? Mm, it's kind of disease, so they shouldn't hide uh, the symptoms. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. It might be better for them. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. All right, hold on one second. Um, are you? Is this Norhan? Um, oh, okay. So I'm just gonna say uh, say hello to Norhan in the chat box here. Norhan, come join us. Is that possible? Okay. And Yolo, welcome. How are you today? Good to see you again. Thank you. Uh, I'm fine. Good to see you again too. Good. Good. So today we are, just to catch everyone up, today we are having a discussion about an article about dogs as a form of mental health treatment. Before we read the article, though, we're holding a discussion about the growing global awareness around alternative forms of health care, and um, we're also discussing cultural taboos around mental health and the difficulties many war veterans must endure upon return home. So let me ask you, Yolo, what uh, what's mental health like where you're from? Mm, mental health. Yes. Mm, well, people tend to to suffer schizophrenia, most of them, mm, because of the life here. Probably because oh. it said that schizophrenia is caused by the environment. It, it it's not caused because of your uh, genetic um, code really? you've got. Yeah, it said that well, environment makes you feel sick, and you can reach that state of being schizophrenic. Whoa! So. Uh, can you tell the class where you are from again? I'm from Peru. Peru, Peru South and, America. Uh, and you mentioned schizophrenia being a specifically large mental health problem in Peru. Mm, well, not that much. Yeah, I'm just uh, naming yes. that, that illness. It uh -huh. could be in a, well, not in a high level. According to statistics, mental health is not a big deal here, but uh, schizophrenia is could be the most common in in that realm of illnesses. Oh yes, 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 yes. I see. And so you don't think, uh, or so you're saying that mental health is not that big a deal. I see. That's good. So if somebody in Peru were to uh, struggle with mental illness, could they get help easily? Mm, not easy. Because yeah, first not easy. You, you have to to get a, you know, a help. I don't know how to say that. Wow. Oh, so insurance? Insurance health. Insurance health. Yeah, insurance health. Yeah, uh, but if you do by yourself, yes. if you do on your own, uh -huh. it it could cause a lot, cause those houses that 
they they give you shelter for a while after uh -huh. you you get you get better yes or get yes, well yes. Mm, probably a month could be I don't know I have a relative that suffers it oh it could be if a month uh, if he like uh, in dollars one hundred dollars probably but w which which is so so high for us very high can, yes so, yeah yes, for so. us. Yeah, that's uh oh gosh, I I could never stay in a hospital for that long. It it would it's like it's very high here too, and insurance is a problem here too. Um, is health insurance attainable, easily attainable in Peru? Uh, table, what is that? Health insurance. Obtainable. Uh oh, can can normal people like uh, middle class people get health insurance? Uh, not really, not really. Uh, it's it, it said that just uh, we we have uh, the rate of eight percent of employment, which is true. But fifty percent, most of fifty percent of uh, employees are under under the table. It's not for their own. Oh. It's, well, it could be half formal, half informal. So he talking about insurance. Well, it's not that common. Ah, so health insurance, health coverage is not that easily attainable. Unemployment is pretty high, so people can't get it without a job. And so mental health treatment is not very affordable for many people then. Yeah. I see. Yeah. I see. Thank you for telling us about the situation in Peru. Edson, Edson. What is it like in Mexico City? What is uh, mental health like in Mexico City? Well, <clears throat> I think it's it's nothing that we talk about much. Uh -huh. I mean, you don't find a lot of people. I think a big issue here is Parkinson and Alzheimer. Oh, really? Yeah, not that you see a lot of people, but people care or is afraid of this kind of, kind of illness because it's not well known here yeah. so yeah. the things we know it's from people from maybe from the United States or from Europe that they are taking care of that disease and they don't know how to fix that so yeah but I think people here in Mexico City especially here in Mexico City suffer just uh, from stress Oh, oh! Tell us about that. What causes stress in Mexico City? That's um, that can get to be a disorder. <laughs> well, because it's a really crowded city. Oh. People, it's always doing things fast. It's always uh. yeah, you know uh, yeah. I mean, they get mad every oh. single day because as soon as they arrive in the subway. Uh -huh. They see people mm, fighting to each other. Whoa! Yeah. yeah. Whoa, that is intense. And bad thing. How, would you say that affects you personally? How do you deal with that stress? Well, actually, I just at the beginning, uh, it affect me a lot to uh. see all these people fighting around you. But now it's uh, it's a daily thing you need to to um, kind of understand mm -hmm. that they are having a really bad day but it's, seriously people fight every single day in Whoa. the subway oh my god yeah <laughs> I don't know how I, I can't imagine that and so and it's not law enforcement is not all on top of that it just sort of happens until somebody loses the fight then is that true yeah, well, there are some police officers there uh, watching out. Ah, <laughs> but, yes. Yeah, but they don't do anything because mm -hmm. it's so common. Maybe at the beginning they stopped the fight, but oh. now they are just like, whatever, do your thing, uh, but in other place yes. where you don't mess with other people. And ah. yeah, people, yeah, <laughs> they. that's why I said we are all crazy. Uh, at least here in Mexico. <laughs> I like it. I can imagine that. That is a crazy life. And you mentioned, are you from Brazil originally? No. 
No, I'm from Mexico City. I know my name is so common in Brazil, but I'm born and raised in Mexico City. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, but every time I tell someone my name, they said like Pele. Yeah, like Pele. Oh, Oh, that's interesting. (laughs) I'm used to it. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing with us. All right, Claudio, Claudio. So just to reiterate, we are having a discussion about uh, what mental health is like in everyone's country. So can you tell us what mental health is like, what mental health care is like in your country? Hey, Norel. Uh, well, I'm, I'm from Chile. Chile, okay. Yeah. Um, and yes, I, I was uh, listening to Edson. I, I don't think that stress and people being stressed you know, on the streets is just a third world problem. Uh-huh. <laughs> and, and I see it like, like a worldwide uh, issue. Uh, um, people in cities especially, they, you can just uh, Stay stare stare at someone uh, without being uh, punched in your face. Uh, I think um, th- this is uh, first. First of all, that we don't uh, take real care in in, uh, in what are our real problems. Uh, I, I mean, mental problems, uh, but but in small. In small things, we don't realize when when there's a mental problem, and yeah. but we create uh, mental problems where there's no uh, no huh. mental problems at, at all, and I think that that's a real uh, problem. Yeah, <laughs> that's yes. a mental problem of their own from. Psychiatrist. I, I would agree with that, absolutely. And I agree that definitely stress is probably not even, is definitely not third world country specific at all. If anything, it's like the kind of stress, a certain kind of stress that I'm thinking of is like first world country specific. <laughs> like corporate, like suit and tie stress, like you know, your your life is your job and you hate your job and you're miserable and all for what, what, you know, so so I understand that completely that we that's that um number one, stress is not specific to any kind of culture or country and it is true that psychiatry likes to see things as problems because the the um the healthcare industry makes money off of problems too. Mm-hmm. And and I think that as a society, we 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 have we have been raised as uh, to be in always in competition and not mm-hmm. not to enjoy la- life, like uh, they teach us uh, to to buy th- things that we don't need and. Yes. And, and not to, to, to look after things that uh, c- can make us happy. Oh, um, God, yes. 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 They, they, yes. they make us work in the things that we don't want. Uh, follow life, following, they make us follow lifestyles that we don't really uh, desire, but we think that we do. And that's a real problem. Yes, yes. Do you have any personal experience, Claudio, uh, where it, it, it sounds like uh, you might have had experience, personal experience where people were kind of, um, I was about to say full of, full of, I was about to say a bad word, I'm not going to say it. It, it sounds like uh, you've been around a lot of people that are lost in the game, lost in the rat race, Lost, ignorant of truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes and no. I, I aware. I aware of what what is happening. Uh, well, I am in law student in law school, ah. and I, I had the chance to to visit in my last year a uh, mental institution. Oh, you did. Yes, and it was really hard. Uh, yes. 
Yeah. Yes. And and I uh, um, as well I work in a in an um, in non non statal organization NG, NGO. NGO. Repeat. Repeat. In an NGO, non-government, non-government organization, non-governmental, non-governmental organization. Yes. yes, yes, yes. That works with meditation, yoga, and and uh, the building of awareness in, in society wow. of, of all these problems. Wow. So, uh, uh, to your question, yes, I, I am aware of, <laughs> yes. of, of being surrounded of all this problem. Oh, God. But, but I don't yes. think that I'm a special case. Of, I'm just aware of that, mm -hmm. that there is a problem. I agree, and I hope that more uh, citizens of the world become aware of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so Hyde, uh, let's move on to the next part of the discussion. Um, th so the article that we are going to read is about uh, a war veteran. Um, like I could say about the United States, war veterans are often not treated well. They are promised a lot of things that they don't ever get. They are promised, well they should be treated as heroes. You know, they come back very often injured and deeply traumatized from these wartime situations and they come back and life is very very difficult for them and and it's almost like people see them and they're kind of they are avoided as opposed to treated I, respectfully. I heard in American uh, some special house for elderly for war veterans. Yes, yes there 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 is and it could be better. Michelle Obama has done a lot of work with uh, with uh, veteran families, mm -hmm. which is really good. Um, there are still issues, like people people are veterans are injured, and they you know it takes like a year for them to get in to see a doctor. So mm -hmm. there are a lot of issues with it. What about in Japan? How are war veterans treated? Uh, we didn't have any war. The um, uh, constitution uh, um, what, uh, um, ban to fight with other countries. You're so right, actually, it's been a while. <laughs> we don't have such uh, the war veteran. Yeah. But um, after retirement, uh, people are a little sad. Uh, before they were working, they had a lot of friends or uh, uh, yeah, acquaintances in other countries, uh, companies, uh, but after uh, retirement, they lost all friends. <laughs> they are related oh. in the company. Oh, so okay. They are very sad and lonely. <laughs> so they're treated well and they're not yeah, yeah. lonely. Oh, that's nice. Yes, but seniors are treated well. Men. And men work hard while they are employed. But okay. then they uh, don't. They didn't care about their family. When they returned to family, family <laughs> somehow ignored him. Uh, repeat one more time. Uh, the wife and the children uh, ignore him. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I see. He I wanted see. to be treated better, uh -huh. but. Uh, almost all cases, they are absent. They oh. work hard. So. Oh, oh, so they they think that they'll be treated well by the family, but maybe not yeah. so much. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Many I see. couple uh, divorced after retirement. Oh, really? What yeah. Uh, can you tell us why, or is it because? Yeah, before uh, the the wife. Oh, was alone in the house, so they already had a lot of friends around the house. Oh. Then suddenly, a husband came back, uh -huh. stayed at home all uh -huh. day long. It's troublesome. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so interesting. So you're saying that the only reason why these marriages worked was because they never saw each other? <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> wow. Still, they're, they're working. Maybe they need to have some conversation with the family. <laughs> <laughs> so they actually have to talk to each other, and that's when they realize that they might not be compatible. 
Oh my goodness! Thank you for sharing that. How, how interesting. So, so older people feel supported by their social groups in Japan, and so they don't feel like they need to cling to a marriage that isn't working after retirement. Yeah, that's right. So <laughs> interesting. Is that true in anyone else's country? I've never heard of that before. Wow. <laughs> wow. Huh. Thank you so much for sharing, Hyde. Is it an isolated case only in Japan? <laughs> yes, that's an a very isolated case in Japan. Do you know if it is it um are other Asian countries like that or is it just Japan? Oh, I'm not sure, but even uh, Korea or uh, Taiwan, they they work hard, so uh, yeah. very similar case. I had even in Japan had a lot of suicide committing suicide. But even Korea has a high rate of uh, the people who commit suicide. Yes, I, I've heard because the education system is so mm. difficult for a lot of the young people. Yes, that they that suicide is common in Korea because they are overworked. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned so is it usually that only one only one partner works and so uh, or do both partners work? The husband and the wife in a couple. Oh, wife has some part-time job. Ah, I see. I see. To, so, to support the house budget. I see. Yes, supplementing the house budget. Okay, so it sounds like uh, they everyone stays busy with work or part-time work and maintaining the home, and then mm -hmm. and then they retire, and then they have to face what's there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. And Yolo. What um, Yolo? What is uh, what is it like for war veterans in your country? Uh, war veterans uh, uh, in the past or in the past? I'm starting to realize that the United States is is the only country that is going into unnecessary wars, and I don't want to get into politics. <laughs> but yeah. I realized that uh, maybe war veterans uh, have not been around for a while in some of uh, in some of your countries. And uh, we had some wars in the past. Mm -hmm. To you know, there were there were like uh, no confrontation confrontations about some some borders that. Mm -hmm. The, the limits. Oh, uh, oh, oh, say. oh, border confrontations. Border border confrontations in the past. So the, the veterans that came, yes. that survived, uh, many of them, yeah, okay, not many, yeah, many of them, yeah, they suffered serious injuries. Ah. Serious. Even they lost some. Uh, arms or legs, Whoa. or they just went blind because uh -huh. of this the weapons. Yes. And and they don't they don't receive anything uh, from the government. Oh. They I remember just three or four years ago a documentary mm -hmm. was showing those veterans mm -hmm. that they 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 are waiting for. For being, um, for being paid and somehow, because they protected the, our country, mm -hmm. uh, no matter if we lost the war, because most of the wars that we had, we lost them. Wow! Yes. And people like people are afraid about a possible war with Chile. But it oh. said on his paper that's how because of the border, border, mm, the border, or the, about one area of the ocean. Ah. Yeah. Whoa, Chile versus Peru. I did not know that. Chile versus Peru. Yeah, it was always. Oh. It was always the same thing. So tension around the border. Who owns what? Yeah. That's kind of mm. like uh, Palestine and Israel. Yeah, but but it was already 
uh, resolved ah. by the court of the, in Holland, Laia, I don't know how to say it, Haya, Haya. Ah. It's an international court that decides. Oh, uh, international who is court. International court. Yes, so I we. And they gave us, they gave us the reason that we, uh, that area of the ocean belong to us, but uh -huh. Chile is complaining about that. So, uh -huh. the, on the newspapers, actually at the moment, yeah, on the newspapers they are saying things that they're not, they don't agree with this and that. Uh -huh. So, yeah. wow. Well, it's I don't know hard, it's if I will be a war veteran. Right. How do they... Yeah. So are, are people drafted into the military? Or do people, sign what? Up, do people sign up voluntarily to be in the military? Um, wow. Well, I'm kind of outdated. Um, ah. I think they are forced, but... I think that law wasn't succeed. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So not. so the draft or, or forcing people to be in the military was not successful. I see. Yeah. Yeah, because those teenagers complain oh, uh, why are we spent one year in the in that field to uh -huh. train in a possible war no they yes. There won't be any war, they said. But who I knows? I see. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm I'm learning so much from all of you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Edson, what about you? What do you have to say about war veterans in your country, in Mexico? Yeah, we don't have that. Right. It's been a while since Mexico has. Yeah. Uh, yeah, being in the army, being in the army here, it's like another job, I uh, guess. Uh, yeah, we respect uh, mili the military, but it's not a topic, I would say. We know uh, they are there, but we also know that they're just fighting narco traffic. Oh, so, nar narcotic uh, traffic, narcotic traffic. Narcotic traffic, yeah. Got you, got you. Oh, we yes. Don't fight with with another countries, mm -hmm. so far. So just internal, internal yeah. maintenance is, is uh, is that be, is that successful? Has there been any um prog progress with fighting narcotic traffic? I know it's a pretty big deal, or it's been. Here, it's a major issue here. Yeah. The traffic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, people. It's how to say. Well, that's a really difficult, a hot topic, because they don't only sell drugs. They also steal oil and kidnap people. And, oh, yeah, so the black market. A lot of yeah. crime. General, generalized crime and corruption. Yep. Ah. That sounds like a full-time job for the military, that's for sure. Yeah, I guess. I hope that they are earning the respect that they deserve. hope so. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you, thank you. Okay, so, Claudio, um, what, uh, what, is our, what is the situation with war veterans like in your country? No, we don't have war veterans either. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> So, so um, is uh, is the military also kind of like a job? Mm, yes, and um, well, it's it's uh, highly regarded to be in the military ah. in here. Ah. Stupidly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Stupidly enough. That's uh well. Stupidly enough, in one way, I guess. I guess that is the the argument is that uh, that's glorification of people wanting to follow directions blindly in one way, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas the loyalty to the country is the other way of seeing that. 
Yes, I think that there are certain uh, areas where they are really needed, mm. like when when there's a ca ca catastrophe, catastrophe mm. in in your country, yeah. uh -huh. probably militaries are are needed, uh -huh. and when when it comes to interna international aid uh -huh. uh, to other uh, countries, uh -huh. but not just. But the, the, the it it stops there. No, no, no. Yes. We have we have uh, um, one day uh, uh, every year mm -hmm. when we show uh, uh, show off, <laughs> so ah. to speak. Yes, show off. All all our military. Uh, oh, so um, us so forces. Us our military forces. Uh, our tanks. Our Whoa. planes. Oh, oh! So everything's on display. So everything yeah. knows <laughs> what exists. <laughs> yeah, it is wow. not for us to see it. That uh, uh, for for our, our neighbors as well. Mm, yes, <laughs> right. Oh, oh, I see a parade. So just, just yeah. so you all know, we've got that. So don't be thinking about doing anything. Uh huh. It's like like like, like when gorillas. Uh, you know, hit their chest. <laughs> no, <laughs> yes. Um, so, uh, what is, what is uh, the the word is called posturing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, uh, male posturing? No, I mean, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? No, I, right? I got you. <laughs> Creating a, uh, a metaphor there. <laughs> well, cool. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. All right, so let's get to the article without further ado. So, um, Hyde, why don't you um, read for us down to down to the bottom here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, could you make it a little bigger? Absolutely, yes. So, two hundred percent. Let's see. Yeah. How does Thank that you. go? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, his name is Bella. His half uh, Labrador, uh, okay, Labrador Little River. Half a uh, great den and it goes everywhere with uh, what? <laughs> oh, sergeant. Sergeant, a sergeant is a military title. Charles Hamando. Uh, but Vera is uh, more than a pet. Hamando uh, considers the dog a personal physician. When Hamand Hamandos was having uh, seizures, Bella would uh, nibble on the side of uh, Ham Hamandos' leg before the veteran realized anything was wrong, and the dog pulled him away from uh, conflict and jumped on his, him during uh, anxiety attacks to calm him down. In condition. Uh, in combination with the uh, medications, Hamandas uh, said that the dog has uh, helped his sim uh, symptoms of post-traumatic uh, stress disorder. I'm alive again, said Hamandas, 49, of the Bronx, New York, now reti retired from the U.S. National Guard. What keeps me going is my dog. A growing number of Americans are getting dogs or uh, mental health needs. Experts say in the uh, case of uh, psychiatric services, animals such as a whaler, uh, they are trained uh, specifically to help people with mental illnesses. In, ma in much the way, I think I dogs are taught to help to blind people. Great, great. So YOLO, what is the main idea that in that paragraph? Is that a, a dog uh, could uh, predict what something could uh, go wrong with his owner, mm -hmm. and yeah, uh, this guy uh, says that the the dog in somehow suit that him and keep him uh, relaxed or calm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because he suffers stress disorder mm -hmm. 
Mm, yeah. Great, great summarization. Excellent. So I want to ask you all, what are what uh, are do service dogs exist in your country? Do service dogs exist in your country, Yolo? Um, yeah, for many many kind of uh, patients. Ah. Uh, kind of patient could suffer stress or children who suffered or who have uh, uh, a terrible disease like cancer. Ah. They are they are sent to the, those hospitals and, and somehow they pet those animals and and those animals keep them uh, soothe the children. Oh, that's so great. They soothe the children. So therapy dogs in hospitals to soothe the children, children who are patients. I see. I see. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hide are what's uh what are are there service dogs in Japan? Yeah, I think so. Um, I go to the coffee shop sometimes. Mm -hmm. Then um, a man uh, who is, uh, has a dog, oh. a dog lead him, he's blind. He works very fast. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Oh, so the dog was helping a blind man shop in the store? Yeah, yeah. Wow. So was the dog, could you see how the, uh, the dog was helping him? Uh, or was he just kind of uh, walking next to him? Because I'd imagine it's very hard to shop as being <laughs> Yeah, sometimes I see another woman, even she is blind, she has a kind of cane, uh -huh. then she is touching the street and working. The, but the man who is with dog is much faster. <laughs> oh, oh so, it, so the dog made this man much more efficient than a cane would be. Working. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Ah, yes, oh, great example, thank you. And what about you, Edson? Um, are service dogs common in Mexico? I don't know. I haven't seen anyone, a any dog mm, yes. like this. I, I, well, okay, I have seen uh, people that has dogs like they're blind, but it's not really common. Not common. Probably only in the city, right? Because I know that uh, stray dogs are very common in the, the um, coastal areas, right? Are stray dogs co uh, common in Mexico City, too? What? Are stray dogs common in Mexico City? A stray dog? A stray dog. Stray dogs mean no owner. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, actually, no. In Mexico City, uh -oh. there are, well, maybe in some places, in the north and really south of the city, yeah, you can find a lot of stray dogs there. Ah, uh, I see. I see. Thank you for the input. And Claudio, what about you? Are, are service dogs um, in your country, common? Mm, uh, they're not common, but uh, they're used for some specific areas. I, I've seen it in, you know, when uh, children uh, have been abused, you know, ah. uh, and they have to, to, to make a, a statement in court. Um, they use dogs for in no, no, they, they don't uh, they don't actually uh, declare in court but, but uh, in a, a isolated room uh, with dogs oh and, and so cameras. so similar to what yolo said like therapy dogs to help children who have been who are in abuse cases uh-huh oh very cool thank you but not for not for helping them Oh. I mean, maybe for uh, the use for for that that, that I have seen them uh, for to help them uh, to declare in 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 a trial. Oh, how do the dogs help them declare something in the trial? How does that work? Uh, I guess the the they make make so make them to to feel more confident. Oh. Uh, Interesting. At in trial, I see. Oh, I've never seen a therapy dog or a service dog used in that way. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. So, in helping 
uh, with the stress of a legal trial in uh -huh. a police case. Wow. Wow. Interesting. Thank you. Thank you. And uh -huh. Delta, uh, so the question is, are service dogs common in your country? All right, so uh, we'll catch up with you later, Delta. So let's move on to the next paragraph here. Okay, so I'm going to have YOLO read starting up here down to there. Hey, hello. Where? Uh, starting okay. with PTSD. Okay. P PTSD. Returning veterans is a major reason for the increasing de demand for these dogs, said John Ansgar, the year attorney and author of Service and Therapy Dogs in American Society. Unlike guide dogs for people with more obvious physical disabilities, there's a lot of great area regarding who gets to have a dog accompany them to places. From restaurants to stores to airplanes, where animals are usually not, not allowed. Why people get psychiatric service dogs? There's pretty good evidence that in some people interacting with pets produces biochemical changes in the brain, says Hal Herzog, professor of psychology at Western Carolina University. In, in a way, we could all use a psychiatric, psychiatric, psychiatric service. Psychiatric. Psychiatric. Psychiatric Great. service. A therapy doc. Because of the incredible amount of stress that we are all under, says psychiatrist Dr. Carol Lieberman, author of Coping with Terrorism, Dreams Interrupted. Caring for a pet helps people become less frightened, more self-sufficient and secure. It takes the attention of their own fears, she said. Through owning a pet, you can prove to yourself that you can take care of another living creature. She said, it reassures that you, that, you, you, that you can take care of yourself. Great. Thank you for reading. So, Yolo, does anything in this uh, reading surprise you? Um, uh, maybe I, I just figured out that it's true that dogs are... Uh, Dogs, dogs can help us to, um, I don't know, produce some biochemical changes in our brain in order to feel uh, calm. Yes. Uh, yeah, relieved for yes. for a yes. for a psychological psychological condition that we were suffering. Great. Yes. Yes. So before I move on, let's just. Uh, uh, go over a little bit of pronunciation together. So, um, so where are we? Let's all pronounce this word together. Psychiatric. 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 Yeah. Psychology. 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 Good. Psychiatrist. 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 Good. Psychiatrist. Good. Yes, the uh, emphasis is uh, in the I here. Psychiatrist. Psychiatrist. Great job. Great job. Cool. Thank you very much. And Claudio, did anything about that surprise you? Oh, unmute to Claudio. All 
right, Edson, what about you? Did anything surprise you about what you read, what we read? Um, a little bit, <laughs> but I like dogs, so I always knew that they have something beneficial for us. Yes, it's uh, it. I love this article because it 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 hints that well, not hints. It states blatantly that research states that we don't need a uh, million dollars of pharmaceuticals for a lot of our problems, as Claudio stated earlier in this class, um, we uh, tend to make problems where either there are no problems or the problem can be solved easily while giving an animal a home to. Yes. Hi, what about you? Did anything in this article surprise you? Hmm, yes. Um, in Japan, there are many stray dogs. They are um, arrested by the city um, officer. Then two weeks later, they will be uh, killed by some gas or something. Ah. So some animal or uh, animal right protecting groups helped some dogs. Uh, they trained the dog. Then they went to the some elderly the house care house. Uh -huh. Then there are many uh, elderly um, like uh, dementia or something. Uh -huh. But they have very uh, good reaction when they. Uh, touch a dog, dog or cat. Oh, so, okay. Mm, so it's very good for their health. Yes, yes. It's a win-win situation. Good for the animals and good for the people, and it's pretty low cost yeah. too, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Great. Thank you, Claudio. Do you have anything to add to that? All right. We'll come back to Claudio. Um, Yolo, what uh can you tell us a little bit about PTSD or post-traumatic mm. stress disorder? Post-traumatic stress disorder. Yes. According to the the article. Yes. Or or just anything that you know about post-traumatic stress disorder. Um Wow. How can I say about this? Uh, is is something that uh, w when you suffer stress uh, at, at the point of your timeline, uh, it could causes a change of consequences. Mm -hmm. uh, it it's not easy to get rid of this this uh, that you suffered before. Mm -hmm. You will suffer it. But in just a few times, it could be just uh, in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening, uh, because of of your past. Mm. Mm, yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a trauma from the past that keeps on that it almost like haunts you. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Um, hi. Do you, can you add anything to what Yolo said about post-traumatic stress disorder? Mm -hmm. There are many uh, things happen. For example, car accident or yes. a natural disorder or um, um, earthquake or a lot of things. Then they ha they got some hurt on their mind. Then after yes. that, uh, they have flashback sometimes. Flashbacks, that's a great word, yes, yes. A great uh, description of the symptoms, thank you. And Edson, what about you? Um, can you add to that? Anything about post-traumatic stress disorder that you know about? Mm, no, I think they all, <laughs> they already said pretty much everything. Great, they just yes. know that people have nightmares and they can go with their own lives. Uh -huh. Yes, yes. Thank you. Anything to add to that, Claudio? All right, cool. Yeah, uh, sorry, we uh, didn't get 
looked as far as I thought that we would get in the article, but I feel like that's okay because we had such a stimulating and fascinating discussion earlier about the uh, what's common in each of our countries. So thank you so much for uh, bringing that all to the table. Really appreciate it. Um, does anybody have any closing words? Anything to add to the discussion? Everything's pretty clear. Cool. Cool. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for coming. Um, I hope that you all have a great day, a great evening, a good night. I'll be teaching another reading comprehension class in a couple minutes here. Feel free to follow oh, me. In a couple of minutes? Yeah. Well, I will go to bed. I will hit the uh, hay. Okay. Yes, hit the hay. Yes, get some sleep. Yes, it yeah, was good to have I'll, you I'll, here. I'll, will suffer stress or uh, post-traumatic <laughs> Right, we won't want, we want, want any of that. <laughs> right, get your sleep. I'm glad you came. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Yolo. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Goodbye, teacher. Bye. Thank you.